I developed a taste for shooting and it's just something I've done all the time and to me it's a great personal satisfaction to pull off a tricky shot, you know, shooting difficult conditions, you know, shooting rain, shooting poor visibility, high winds, steep angles, that sort of thing. I just enjoy doing that, the challenge of it. If you know that your hunting will actually sometimes demand a long shot and you want to push the limit where you're still sure to take the first shot kill, which is the demand that the hunt puts on you. If you want to do an ethical hunt, you have to be sure that you actually don't think you're going to be hitting, but you actually hit your first shot. If you want to push that limit, you have to start doing this. As you probably noticed, the weather is very rough. The sea you see on the outside, it goes on forever. It doesn't meet anything until the North Pole or Greenland. So it's very wild, very rough, and the weather is very, very hard. If you can endure it, it can actually be quite nice. It's not always as good as this. We got the, the new Blaser R8 and the 330 Lapo Magnum. You got these in the mail a few days ago, or just yesterday? Just right? barely. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the new size V8, which is 4.8 to 35. So we'll test them here. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll start off with anchoring our trajectory. This is 94 meters and 10 degrees down. Yep. And then I'll switch you straight out to 800 and I'll talk you into the target and uh, from that we'll find a unique trajectory of the rifle because when I have the arc I can calculate backwards yep. and then we know exactly what scope setting to use. Yep. And then I'll take you through all the targets. Yep. So we'll basically we'll just f first verify that it's actually on target at the yes. at 100 meters or 94 and then we'll just double check the trajectory because it's factory trajectories go there usually a little bit off. Oh yes, uh, the so, trajectory on the ammunition box is not worth much actually, other than a rough guide. Okay, into the work. Yep. We've zeroed the rifle at 100, or 94 meters to be precise, and uh, I want the rings to be, a, I want it to be set at zero at that distance. So, uh, so we can click for the distances and always come back to zero with no, with no trouble. So I'm just resetting the turret here. We're shooting the 338 Lapo Magnum. It's a, it's a fairly well-known caliber, but it's, uh, I don't personally use it. So it's, uh, it's got about the same trajectory as the 6.5s that I usually shoot, but it's got more more energy, and uh, you can also tell in the recoil. I probably slipped a little bit on the recoil there, probably. Uh, so it's going to be harder to shoot tight groups, but it's going to be hitting harder where it hits. But I think we're set. We'll uh, reset the windage turret as well, just to have zero, so we can click for wind and come back to zero whenever we want. And we are going to click for wind, so... If not today, for sure tomorrow. When in Norway, always click for wind. Little yellow dot. That's a rubber dock. Range is 808, you'll find it in the scope. In the water there, yeah. Yes. In that little small hollow there, okay. The okay, out. Load up for the duck. It reminds me of a bad old film. <laughs> yeah, we got ourselves a combo. <laughs> I'm ready. Miss. Twenty six clicks up. Two clicks right. That's it. So what we just did here, we tried the rifle at, we, did, we zeroed it first, and then we tried it at 808 meters, and uh, we had a theoretical number of clicks that we started with, and that was a little bit off, as it always is, and uh, we uh, shot, observed the misses, 
clicked our way into the target and uh, now we have the true drop at that distance. Now we know the exact number of, of clicks we have to take in this air pressure, this temperature, whatever. And uh, from there we can sort of start working to find our true, tr true trajectory. And when we have that, we can get serious about some target shooting. We don't need to do actual test firing at all the ranges. I have a short range and I have a long range. And as long as I have those, I'm able to find any distance in between. And it's going to be correct. We'll of course verify that by test shooting. But this is given that we know the ballistic coefficient of the bullet. We could have a worse ballistic coefficient and a faster bullet and we could get the same drop at 808 meters. But the trajectory would be like this. And now we have a better BC and slower bullet. It'll fly more like that. And they'd both drop as much at 808 meters. But we know the, the, the ballistic coefficient of this bullet. So that, that's why we can tell that it will fly in a very certain way and drop any number of centimeters at any distance, it'll be a given. If you were working with a totally unknown bullets, I would introduce one or two more ranges so I could get more checkpoints for the calculations. But this bullet, well documented, only need to use points. You can't just take the factory stuff out of the box and, and, and just look at the ring. Okay, this is 400 meters, click, 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 it's going to be right on because it's not going to be. So if you're are serious about actually hitting things at longer distances, you, you, you will need to take into account air pressure and, and temperature. You'll have to get more into weather than you were before. But once you've done your basic checks, you can have a fair bit of confidence in the, in the stuff and then you can sort of assume that if anything goes wrong, it's you. It's always you. But uh, if you are a hunter that do most of your hunting within 100 meters, you have an excuse not to do this. If you're looking at anything longer, you don't have an excuse. That's basically it. Now we're supposed to have a true trajectory. We're supposed to have a good idea of how this bullet should really hit. So what we're after trying now is just what can we achieve when we know the true trajectory. So we'll try a few targets here and see. There's 35 centimeter steel targets, so we'll see. They're, they're reasonably small, so. Go straight right to the small island. There's a white spot there as well. Yes. That's another target. And go from the island straight up to the rock where you see the yellow spots yeah. that will be our last target on the steel okay so that would take us from 400 to roughly 900 which will be slightly outside what you have clicks for in this go yeah yep. okay okay yes. we'll try that hit center right Ulf, look left on the island small plate Range 540, scope setting 68, wind 0. I'm ready. Wind 1 left, please. Ready. Hit, center. We'll hit that again. Yeah. Two clicks right, one click up. If we had a tilted scope mount, we would have been shooting to 1100 meters. Ready? Ready. That's a hit. Add 10 clicks right for wind. Aim at the top end of the yellow plate, you know, in line with the target. Yeah. Yeah. Ready? Ready. Hit. Center high. Yeah. Aim slightly lower. Ready? Ready. Hit. Center right. Amazingly. Soft recoil, after all, considering considering the size of these. But the the suppressor does a lot. It really makes this shootable. I wouldn't like to shoot this without the suppressor. I wouldn't like to shoot it with a muscle brake. But really nice now. Really nice. Okay, so basically now we have a verified trajectory. But instead of looking at this table, we want to put it on the turret. So this is basically this 
the thing we're doing now is basically the same thing as one of the custom links, but we don't have the size factor here, so we just have to improvise for these conditions. And after this is done, shooting at range is basically just clicking to whatever range the laser says it is, and then of course dealing with the wind. And if you do get changing conditions, you only use a similar card and see what sort of changes you need to do for that specific day. So for instance, if we had snow tomorrow, it will be a you know, range minus two day or range plus two would actually be more accurate. Meaning that you will dial range as normal, but add the two clicks and you will be spot on. And that's how you work with this system. For instance, I myself do a lot of hunting in Scotland and on my turret, I have the Scottish trajectory on, even though I have mined the data here locally, and it's just a theoretical uh, correction, and it's absolutely spot on in Scotland. And I have to do some minor adjustments when I'm shooting here, but here it's targets, it doesn't matter. In Scotland, it's deer calling, and it really matters that the bullet strikes where it's supposed to. The only error we have now left is the wind, and it changes fairly rapidly here. We don't have a very strong wind, but that would be the biggest error we're left with. Okay, so we're nearing the end. We put together the shooting system, which is the rifle, the scope and the ammunition, and we identify this as an individual. We now know exactly what to do with it to get it to hit where we want it to. So, the final test will be that sitting duck behind me and for show we'll go up to that mountain, the very top and try and pull up one of the more technically advanced shots that we can. I know the system will do it, but can we? I just wanted to take you up here because this is where I believe this scope will shine. Now, if you look all the way down there, you have a target in the water. It's roughly 800 something meters and you can, can't really see it with a naked eye. But using the scope, we can actually examine the target in great detail. And hang on. And I can clearly see it's a rubber duck, commonly found in bathrooms. It's lying on the left hand side. The bottom is now pointing towards the right and the beak is pointing towards us. Small circular head and a tiny red beak. So that actually saved me one or two hours of walking just by looking at it through the scope. So that will come in handy. Shall we take a shot at it? Okay. There's actually a fair amount of wind down there coming in from the right but at an angle. Mm. That was I'll try one and a half effective. Okay. I'm ready. ready. Hit! Yeah, it's a hit, yeah. Yeah, that worked. 826 meters. I think the duck is slightly larger than this package and we nailed it on the first shot and it's basically about doing the homework and setting up the system correctly and you're going to have brilliant results.